Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to play with some uh, watercolor out of the tube. I haven't ever taken the time just to uh, goof around with these and play with them fresh. So I thought we would um, experiment with that and uh, use a little water and then, you know, just kind of paint around with them, maybe with a palette knife and treat them like uh, maybe they were acrylic. So I got, uh, I would not advise using your expensive paints or your good paints for this because it is a little wasteful, I guess. Uh, what I'm using today are Paul Rubens and they, um, obviously they're tubes, but uh, these are, let me grab it. Uh, I think they call them, uh, is it Cha May? I think is how she said it. But those were actually sent to me so I don't feel too terrible about, um, you know, maybe wasting a little bit of it. But I would, if you're going to do this and experiment, I would just use your um, less expensive paints. And then uh, I'm using this Academy watercolor paper, Bao Hong, kind of a big sheet today. Uh, give us room to play. And then I just grabbed a bunch of texture making tools piece of an old credit card. Um, it's got a point on it. And this is from Jelly Arts. It's one of those tools that you can use on your, um, what do you call that, gel plate. This is a very simple uh, tool they use for cake decorating. So, um, you can get like packs of these off of Amazon or the craft store and they're a lot cheaper than buying uh, tools that are art tools. Uh, this is a Vicky Booten uh, texture tool. I'm not sure what the name of it is, but it just has all these different little patterns in it. Good for mark making. I grabbed a couple of fan brushes. Maybe we'll scratch in a little bit with our uh, glass dip pen. And I've got a water bottle. So I think in a palette. So, and I picked these three colors because I thought uh, we might run them together a bunch. So maybe we wouldn't make too much mud out of a green, a blue, and a yellow. I'm going to start with some of this on this palette over here. I've got Sap Green. This is Gamboge Hue. And my blue is Indigo. Get it open. Mm, this is such a pretty color. Okay, and uh, I don't have anything in mind really other than just playing and uh, having fun. So uh, let's see, what should we start with? Maybe a little bit of green. I'm just going to kind of go in and spread some color around. Now, we've got a couple of options here. Let me get some of the blue. Uh, we don't have to wet these. We could just leave them and they'll dry just kind of like an acrylic would. Or, of course, you can add water here and there. So I think that's what, what we will do. Didn't get a whole lot there because it's pretty dry. And where is this credit card? OK. 
kind of do maybe some smearing. This is just really therapeutic art. Maybe some people wouldn't even call it art, but sometimes it's nice just to play with your supplies, just not have a plan. It's a good way to uh, de-stress, right? Because you're not thinking about having to make anything in particular. Let's see, something else. Let's take some of this green. Kind of dip my card into it. See if we can make some shapes here. I like that. And I do like what this uh, palette did over here. This like little star, starburst kind of pattern. Let's do it in blue. Oh, I know. I'm going to put them together there. I like that. Let's see. So you can just go through. That might be a mistake. We'll see. All right, let's get some water going. So, like I said, you could um, leave it dry. And uh, let's just go in here with a spray bottle. And then, of course, we can pick this up and let the paint run. Oh, this is good. I don't even have a paintbrush. Look at that. Let's uh, maybe do some drips this direction. Trying to stay in focus here. Uh, let's see. I guess I will get a brush. You can kind of tell your paint where you want it to run by putting water there. See, and it'll... It'll go right down into the drips you made. Oh, look at that. Mm -mm. Love this. Maybe do some this direction. Look at all that color. Do some drips this way. All right, now let's see, we need a paper towel here. Let's, before that dries, let's scratch into that. Mm. And then I like using this little paint pen, paint pen, um, what do you call this? Dip pen. This is really good for scratching into your paint. You can use a skewer that as well. 
All right, let me get just a wet brush here. And kind of let, let some things run. What we could do, that's a lot of water. Let me take one of these little blower tools that you use for alcohol ink. Ah, I really just did that. Ah. Okay, hang on. I really just made a mess, a big one. So don't set your tools in your wet paint. <laughs> I need to get a baby wipe. All right, maybe that's clean enough for a minute. Take, oh, that's really pretty, that blue and the green. Oh, isn't that cool? Nice splattery effect. Don't ask me what we're going to make out of this. Okay. Then I do want to scratch into that. Let's see. And even though you can't see it right now, that pigment will settle down in there be pretty cool. So you can already see where the blue is doing it. And over here. All right, let's get some water and do something with this. It's a pretty bright yellow, isn't it? Let me spray that a little. We'll try to get it to come down here some. And this may turn out to be a big old mess and that's okay. Um, we could always use it as a background for something else and cut it up, make, uh, kindness cards out of them, which I did a video on that. Might want to check that out if you haven't seen it. It's a really nice idea, I think. Uh, take. I was trying to get this hair out of here. Apparently, it's going to stay. Uh, but anyway, you take your kindness cards or your artwork and cut it up, and then write nice little positive things on it, and leave them in public. For complete strangers just to kind of brighten somebody's day. Which I think is an awesome idea. Okay, let's... This way. That will get a nice bloom. Yes, out of those, the green and the yellow. Let's spray that and see if we can get some bleeding. This is really cool. I like this over here. This all this little mix. Of course, if you get too much or maybe something you don't like you can
kind of lift it up a bit. But I wanted to use a, a block of paper because I thought we'd be using a lot of water and it may not, um, you know, may not hold up very well to all this water if I didn't use decent paper. Oh, look at that. So now that we have some wet in here, wet paint, let me take um, some of the blue. Oh, look at that. Yeah, we need all of the colors on there. That looks pretty cool. Uh, let's take some blue in the wet green paint. This turned out to be kind of geometric. Just cleaning that card off. Look at all of this. This is so interesting. I like it. That looks cool. That is doing fun things. Ooh, love it. Wonder if I should add another color. Should we chance it? I'm going to start with a little bit of just kind of a wet area and then paint into that with that card. Sorry, y'all. Hopefully I'm not making everybody dizzy. See, if you plan this out, which kind of defeats the purpose, but you could make some really cool uh, paintings with this idea. But this is one of the reasons that I just love watercolor so much. It just has a mind of its own. And the water just takes it in all kinds of places that you probably wouldn't have thought of yourself. Oh, this is looking good. Might not want to wet that too terribly much. So I think all those colors might make brown, which, I mean, is cool too. <laughs> Brown's a cool color. All right, let's play with this fan brush. Let's do a little more yellow, maybe. Picking that up, that yellow might be too much. This is messy, by the way. That's what makes it fun. I love that.
This is so fun in here. Let's see. I feel like we need to make some more marks in there. Uh, let me get this fan brush and blue. I think I'm going to have to get more paint. I've got my heater on and yeah, it's uh, this paint dries super fast. Just making messes everywhere. Uh, let's do we need a little water. Look at that. Get it wet and it starts reacting and looks beautiful. Sorry if I'm getting out of frame here. I'm trying not to. I'm going to put a little texture in with this dry paint on the wet paint. This is looking so cool. It's a little crazy, but it's really neat. Sometimes crazy is good, right? Wet this a bit. I'm getting kind of close to thinking it's about time to let it dry. I go in, wet this, and drip a little water. Whoops, that was a lot of water. I have a lot of cleaning to do after this.
that cool? I love it. Definitely something you couldn't have created with just a brush. All right, let's see here. Mm, that's good. This is not my typical color palette for sure. Oh, that is so amazing. Let's see if we can, yeah, reactivate some of that. That is super fun. Crazy fun. It will scratch in here a little bit more uh, with this. Mm, you just do little lines with little hash marks. This is turning out to be pretty linear, lots of lines. Ooh. Go through there. That looks great. Yum scrum. Isn't that good? <laughs> I'm easily entertained. I'm telling you, this is if you're having a bad day, you need to sit down and do this. This is good fun. I wish that uh, scribble writing would show up a little better. Let's okay. Good stuff. All right, so I think we ought to play with texture just a little bit before it completely dries. Um, so I might, it, it popped loose. We put so much water on there. Oh no, that's where it, uh, that's where the opening is. I thought it popped loose. Okay. Wonder if, oh, I didn't even use my, Good little mark making tools over here. That's got some previous paint on it. That's interesting. Now you can make mark making tools out of anything you want. It's got a little brown on there. That's all right. Like brown should go good with this. Okay, uh, we could put a little salt on there. Also, I have a couple of background script stamps and I think that I'm gonna put them on here in the hopes that while they dry, 
that we'll get a little something from them. I'm going to have to put weight on this. So let me get like a cutting board or another board or something and kind of flatten this out. Put weight on that and let it dry. And then we'll come back and see what it looks like. All right, that has dried completely. And my, unfortunately, my little stamps did not um, produce very much of an imprint when it dried. Uh, but the paper was super warped, so that may have had something to do with it. I can see a little bit of it, which is pretty cool. But I, this is looking really amazing to me. This, I've got parts that I love, maybe some parts not so much, which is pretty typical. But look at this. this. This is my favorite part for some reason. I just love the way those colors blended. And um, look at this. This to me uh, reminds me of rust. And I don't know, it just looks like a little rusty piece of metal. So I thought that was kind of cool. And that looks like plaid. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of a plaid shirt. But I wanted to add just a couple more things. Um, so I want a little more of that rusty effect on the other side. I, I, this is looking kind of plain to me. And so let's see if can still use this maybe so I'm gonna just go in a couple of places and add some of that rusty look um, and then I think I'm gonna add some brown in here because I think she needs it just because that brown that came off of that other tool uh, I really love that how that color goes with it. So thought I'd add a little of that. Uh, the brown I'm going to use is this Van Dyke brown. Maybe. Oh, it's kind of separated a little bit. And if you're uh, doing this and, you know, maybe it didn't come out exactly like you want it, uh, of course, that's perfectly fine. You can, and what I may do is um, maybe cut this in half. I was kind of thinking this kind of looks like a painting to me and this looks like one, like there are two maybe different I don't know, they just have two different looks to them, to me. So, I'm thinking about doing that. Plus, you can uh, do some more, do some layers, like mixed media layers. Which is also something I'm contemplating. Let's see, where do we want this? Brown in there. Oh. And here.
All right, let me quit messing with it and uh, dry this part, and then we'll be right back. Okay, that is uh, all dry. And I am really not in love with this area right here. I really like what's going on over here, and I like this, um, this not so much. So I am going to get a stencil and see if I can knock some of that backward into the uh, background. This stencil, I want to say, came from Joggles. I think it's a Karen Tamir stencil, if I'm not mistaken and I've just got my modern masters gold paint oh this brush is great I was going to experiment I've been using my uh where was that my um stencil brush for uh stenciling lately but I wanted to try, because I found this is just a makeup brush. Um, and it's just got softer bristles. They're all, they're flat, like a stencil brush would be. And it is working fantastic. I think I just found a new brush. Let's see. I'm just making little circles in here with that brush and I usually don't use I usually just take stencils and use pieces parts of them you know like not do it as a whole okay I do love the gold uh, over the, the blue and the green but I might should have picked a different color to go on top of the yellow with but you can't I don't think you can really see it very good man this thing is just so smooth Stencil, stencil brush is good, but uh, it is a little rough. Okay, now that's pretty good. See how that's on top of that darker color. I'm going to add a little over here. I like to take off some of the paint before I go to the stencil with it or the paper with it so it doesn't give me a blob of paint that runs up underneath the stencil. That's good. I like that. Just gives a little bit of extra interest. You can always use that to knock back anything you don't like. Kind of disguise it. Mm, it's good. Good, good. Maybe just a little bit over here. Take a bit back. It's good. See, it just looks broken, which I like. 
All right, let me put a little bit up here in this corner. That's good. All right. It's all dry. And I went ahead and cut the paper off the block and just cut off a couple of parts. Well, I cut out what I really liked. So look at how this is looking with the mat. Like, this was my favorite part. So I'm going to keep this. These parts I can uh, cut up and craft with later. I have one other thing that I want to do just to kind of finish it off. I'm going to use this Liquitex uh, Transparent Raw Umber. And this is uh, acrylic ink. And sometimes I like to just go in and use it for acemic writing. So, and I, what I do is I have the ink in the dropper, but I'm not going to squeeze the dropper. That's really important. Otherwise, you'll have big blobs. But I just want to come down and maybe, you know, do uh, a word right in here. So this does, I mean, you, I guess you kind of take your chances with the uh, dropper because it doesn't always come out like you want it, but that is close enough for me. Um, of course, that's not a real word. Uh, you know, simic writing is just meant to look like something, but uh, not be legible. So there you go. Let me show you a close up so you can kind of see some of that fun little texture. You can kind of see a little bit of the scratching that we did with that glass pen in there. Anyway, I just really like how that turned out. So I hope you guys try this. That was a lot of fun. Um, let me know if you do and uh, post on the Facebook group so I can see what you got. Uh, feel free to join us. The link is in the description if you're not already over there. Um, and thank you very much for being here. I really appreciate you guys. Um, all the likes, subscribes, and uh, sharing also really helps push these videos out and helps me keep going for you guys. So anyway, I appreciate it and I hope you have a fabulous day and I will see you on the next video. Bye y'all.